Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews, and convention panels. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, welcome back to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. It is hashtag RPG a day 2023 and we are at August the 9th. And uh, not only is it going to be my voice you're hearing, but it's a couple other voices from uh, yesteryear because it's been way too long since we've chatted together. I've got Justin and John with us. Hey guys. Go ahead and introduce Hello. yourselves. Howdy, howdy. So, so Justin, okay, I guess I'll get, I'll the, I'll get the party started here. <laughs> My name is Justin Oldham. I'm the creator of AC After Collapse, and uh, you can read all about my many crimes through shadowfusionbooks.com. And uh, to get the ball rolling, I understand that this uh, segment of the RPG a day is about uh, dice. And so I do have uh, some favorite dice. And the the most important thing I want to mention is that your dice have history from the moment you first get the bug to play RPGs until the point in time many decades later when you take that beat up old dice bag full of chipped and abused dice and you put it on the shelf and you forget about it for the rest of your days. Those dice, they're your old friends, they're your old war buddies, and they are symbols of of all of the challenges, the trials and the tribulations and all the times that the GM has screwed you over. All of that is kept right there in that handful of dice. So with that, with with that in mind, uh, I am a fan of physical dice. Uh, I think there, there's just nothing better in the world than, than having your own dice because again, after you've had them for 10 years, you start to know their stories and you start to, whether you intended to do it or not, you do develop some superstitions. You know, you've got you've got that one D twenty that you can always count on, but it's your nuclear option and you don't go there until the spit has really hit the fan. So uh, you know there will be moments when you'll be sitting there at the game table and you'll be you'll be looking at it and you'll be looking at the GM. Don't make me do this. You know I can. So we've all been there. And so that that that's uh, that's what I want to say about about physical dice. But originally, and I'll go so far all the way back to the year 2000, I was not a fan of electronic dice rollers. The early dice rollers were buggy. They could be caught in a logic loop. And mm-hmm. and so, you know, when you are sitting there and you're just clicking with the mouse and you're getting you're getting lousy rolls over and over and over again, if you didn't refresh the the platform you were going to get stuck with those cruddy rolls all night long. And likewise, if you were just smoking hot for the evening, you could cheat and just keep the platform open. But uh, I learned myself uh, in order to, to be a bit more fair as a GM and to be a bit less, um, Oh, to be a bit less unsavory as a player. uh, If I had like five or six really hot rolls in a row, Yes, yay for me, but yeah, I, I, I'd shut it down. I'd, I'd reboot it, and I'd, I'd bring it back just to, uh, just because uh, you know I, I want to keep the DM's blood pressure down, and I want my fellow gamers to to have faith in me that I did not go to Vegas and hire somebody to tweak the code. And no, no, that, no, I, I don't do that. It's just uh, it's just my my thing. But now in today's world. 
you have your choice of many different f- forms of a physical dice. In my own collection, I've actually got dice made of wood. Because I live here in Alaska, I have a small number of dice that have been carved from walrus ivory. Mm. So I do know that uh, the different materials, they have different rolling dynamics. And because of the weight of the materials, and of course, when you when you cut the dots into the dice, you're changing the weight balanced characteristics. So you got that. Now, you, anybody who's ever looked online will see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of very nerdy blog posts about all kinds of different brands of dice. Yes, Chess X, I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> and, and people have written thousands of lines of mathematics to show that these balance, these dice are balanced or those dice are terribly unbalanced. And, and I've known many uh, DMs, GMs over the years who have said this brand of dice uh, is not welcome at my table. If I see those dice at my table, I've got a very large hammer over here, and uh, I won't destroy them, but I'll cripple them, and you won't like it. So there, there's, uh, there, there's that. Now, with the uh, um, with the advent of the more modern polycarbonate uh, composite materials, some of these modern dice will fool you because they'll be so feather light in your hand your inclination is to not trust. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's taken me about five, I don't know, five years realistically to get over my fear of featherweight dice, but I'm finally willing to trust them enough now that uh, I, I can, I can roll with it, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, on, on the basis of that pun, I just want to remind everybody to, to please look up our good friend, Evan cook at paradigm lost because if he was available for this podcast, he'd have quite a bit to say because he does design his own dice. And in past episodes that I've been lucky enough to participate with him, he will go on long enough uh, about the different comp- compositions of the different materials. Uh, Jim will tell him to either shut up or, or go buy some beer. <laughs> so you, you got you, you got there, there. There's a whole range of things here to be said about the uh, about the different materials and the use of electronic dice. I personally have used the rock and roll dice roller and you can download this th- this thing for your PC or you can download it uh, for your phone either way as you please and it allows you to select the the color of your dice it allows you to select the number of your dice and uh, uh, for reasons I don't I don't need to explain here there have been times when I've had three instances of the rock and roll dice roller open. Each of the each of the sets of dice are all all color coded, so I can get through mass combat situations in relatively short order. Because we all know what that's like. You've got five or six players at the table, but cough cough cough. There's like thirty five kobolds. So okay, you know that's going to take a while, and yeah, so. Uh, we all we all know what that's like, but you can tackle the problem with electronic dice quite nicely. And I'm going to defer to 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 Jim when it comes to other uh, dice rolling platforms because I I know he has plenty to say. But really, in the modern world, 2023, you should not be afraid to use physical dice in combination with electronic dice. Yes, you're going to have some issues because there are moments when your brain is going to say, these numbers just don't work. You know, this is not the spread I'm used to. So uh, you just get, you know, get over it, drink a little more beer if you have to. And because we all know that uh, D20 plus beer means fun. (laughs) Okay. Uh, so that, yes. that, 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 that's the sum total uh, of everything I can tell you, and I believe I just did it in less than five minutes. So uh, uh, with, that, with that in mind, I'd like to, I'd like to hand the baton off to uh, John Paul Reed, who is a, a, a dice master in his own right. Now, Justin, please forgive me, but I disagree with you. Uh, once... I tried to play with, uh, you know, a, a dice rolling computer program online. 
the one of the players who got me onto the platform of his, he confessed to me afterward that as, since I was the DM, he rigged my platform to roll nothing higher than 10. And he rolled lower than 11. He actually programmed this. From that moment, and you didn't was, anti- you, you did not anticipate this treachery? I trusted <laughs> him. Now, from that moment on, where I do you, Where do you play? How I can I sign I up for I your crew? I, 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 I didn't interrupt you. Right? <laughs> Let me finish. I will not use electronic platforms. I will not play D&D online. The whole point of D&D is getting together with your friends. I never bought or cared much for COVID, and COVID is over now. So we can get back together and play D&D. Now, I have a splendidly, uh, I, I wish my video were working, it's not. I have a splendidly uh, varnished and polyurethane uh, box or little chest filled with most of the dice I've been playing with for the last 45 years or so. I actually have I actually have three of my original set of nine dice that I got to start playing way back in 1977. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hail and praise Evan Cook and Paradigm Lost. From what I've seen, they are excellent physical dice. And if anyone tries to hammer my dice, I will hammer them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, it doesn't take much to say, John, I don't like those dice, or there, there's something wrong with them. Can you use other dice? And I'd be, sure, no problem. I'd put the offending dice away and get out different ones. Now, uh, I also thought today we were also doing another topic about fiction and how fiction has influenced our gaming. Is that right? Uh, uh, fiction will be tomorrow for August the 10th. The favorite oh. fiction. Let's not confuse the time travelers right now, because they may be I, afraid I, that they that they plugged into the I wrong day. Let's apologies. just let's stick to the dice. My apologies, Today's topic James. is the favorite James. dice. My apologies, James. Um, I I I thought you said nine and ten. Okay, right. Never mind. Okay. Uh, of course, my favorite dice are Paradigm Lost with Evan Cook, but when they're not readily or easily accessible. I'm a champion of Chessick. I know a lot of people love to make fun of Chessick dice makers, but guess what? Good is never cheap and cheap is never good. And with Chessicks, yes, you pay a little extra for them, but you get high quality, splendidly balanced dice. You want colors, you want shades. I even got chrome plated dice from Chessicks. <laughs> Uh, you you, uh, you guys are familiar with Chessex, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a box of their dice from time to time. <laughs> I, I would I would put, I would put them number two under Paradigm Lost of uh, Evan Cook's dice. I would put them as number two. <laughs> now, um, I don't really use real dice, and when I DM. I keep my players on my toes very easily. I know a lot of people love to do the old roll the dice and then quickly grab it. Oh, it was a 20. Yeah, no, I don't do that. How I keep my players on their toes is that I randomly look at their dice rolls, meaning once in a while, you know, I'll let them roll without me looking at it. But it drives them crazy when I'm like, wait, I'm sticking my nose over my GM screens. I'm watching you roll. Uh, I I find doing it randomly, you know, with my players, keeps them honest. And uh, uh, I'm sorry if I'm an old dinosaur fogey, but I I just, I refuse to play online seriously because I have my own world, as James will let me sneak in here, that I have my own fantasy books, my fantasy books. Swords and sorcery fiction books that are set in my Dungeons and Dragons homebrew world. Uh, when we do the final promos at the end, I suppose I'll go into detail. But if you want to take a look on Amazon, uh, James, may I say the website now, or should yeah, I save that? Yeah, you, you can gladly share. Okay. Uh, if anyone goes to my Amazon author page, ooh, author page. Yep, they're free and uh, they're available on Amazon. 
uh, just type in John Paul Reed, this time use my full name, and it's R-I-E-D. Everybody misspells my last name. Look under John Paul Reed, under books and authors, you will find my page. And here is the short uh, version of my website there. Uh, of course, the usual HTTPS colon slash slash then AMZN dot TO slash over, uh, under the question mark, that one, uh, three O, little O, lowercase O, then uh, three O, capital X, capital N, lowercase N, A as in apple, B as in boy. Go, go to my website at the uh, Amazon author page. You will see at least five of my books available. You can even get them on Kindle if you don't want an autographed copy signed by me. Uh, and I have I, my, my sixth book came out in April. And I'm delighted to announce that in the next two weeks, my sixth book, the second edition will come out with all of the printer's errors eliminated from them. Yay. <laughs> so uh, you can always contact me. And very soon, these will be available on Amazon. Give me, give me another week or two, three weeks, my sixth book will be available. Or you can, you can contact me um, always at my email address, ramapog, made up word, at gmail.com. R is in Robert, A is in Apple, M is in Mary, A is in Apple, P is in Paul, O is in Oscar, G is in George, G is in George, that means two Gs, at gmail.com. And just say, hey, John, I want to buy some books. Where can I send you money? And you can, sh I can ship them to you after that. <laughs> now, back to dice. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a dinosaur. I, I, any, any program or any Roll20 or anything online can be rigged, uh, messed with. As you guys said, oh, I forgot to refresh. You know, it's been rolling great for me all night. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I play for real. And I play with people. And I've got marvelous players. I've even got two stunning ladies who uh, do marvelous cosplay uh, as my players, uh, two of my players. And I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have a six-player game that uh, I've been running for several months now. I, uh, my, I'm working out my schedule to try to uh, get this up and going again. We had to take a hiatus while I started another job with my schedule changing. But... Uh, but I'm sorry, guys, I I don't agree or I, I don't plan on ever using online D&D gaming or online D&D dice roll. I, uh, I, I'm just old that way. <laughs> uh, Paradigm, Lo Paradigm Lost with Evan Cook and uh, Chessex, Chessex.com, C-H-E-S-S-I-X, -S -S -I, I think, dot com. Those are the those two sites will get you all the dice you could ever possibly want. I even have a 34 sided die and uh, I even have a uh, 100 sided die, literally one to 100, one die. <laughs> and of course, uh, all the other usual dice and many different sets of those. OK, I've, I've talked for about five minutes. And uh, how do we proceed, guys? <laughs> So uh, I'll jump in there since since I, I originally was the I agree with you of the actual goblin clickety clack stones in my hand are the only dice for me because I used to like boo and hiss at players when they'd whip out their phone with a dice app on it and I'd just be like yeah. roll real dice borrow mine if you need some and I gotta right. say with the the whole COVID quarantine thing mo most of my games went from in-person games to electronic games so I'll cover a big spread of dice so for, first for me when it comes to your your classic polyhedral set of dice one dice that mm -hmm. i want to you know totally shoot a call out to is uh, yeah again i agree evan you know uh paradigm lost and evan cook great dice especially yep. the super cool liquid filled ones which are just awesome to look at but i yep. have to drop a name for polyhero dice they're a uh, group of dice makers that uh, did many Kickstarters, and they have different sets of dice that the dice are actually 
themed on what your character is. So they've got a cleric set, they've got a warrior set, a wizard set, a rogue set, and the Kickstarter is actually coming out soon for the new bard set, which has like a dagger, drum. you have D20 and a D12 that is a drum. So when you roll it, eventually it'll clicky clack to the right spot for the number. You've got uh, a loot. You've got a uh, tragedy and comedy mask for the D4. I mean, it, it, Polyhero uh, dice do a great job of making really cool themed dice, which we always, you know, like the wizard said, I love the D4s were actually fireball. Oh uh, no, the D4s were magic missile. The D6s were fireballs, and they actually look like little fireballs. So when you roll magic missile, you roll your D4s, which look like little magic missile darts, and your fireballs are the D6s, you know. So polyhedro dice make great themed dice, which is awesome for for your D&D or any game that uses a, a polyhedron set, you know, which is the 4, 6, 8, 12, 10, 20. Totally said that out of order. Somebody's OCD is going to rise there. And <laughs> as well as I'm a big, massive fan of the Fantasy Flight Star Wars series, which is Edge of Empire, Age of Rebellion, Force and Destiny. And they use their special proprietary dice, which have symbols instead of numbers. And they basically utilize D8s, D12s, and D6s. I will say, since Asmodeus made the business choice that was not wise to get rid of the game and they sold it to Edge Studios that it is cool. almost impossible to get Genesis or or Edge of Empire dice now but there is a third party vendor called Baron of Dice that actually make a and I've got to actually handle and play with some of these which is nice they call the Galactic RPG not to be confused with Star Wars but Galactic RPG dice set for a real reasonable price, we have only $25, which for anyone who's shopped around for Edge of Empire dice or Genesis dice, they can get stupid expensive on eBay because they don't make them anymore because the dice have been lost in China. But if you go to Baron of Dice, you can actually get a cool, clear set of the dice instead of, you know, the regular dice are, you know, opaque. These guys are beautiful crystal clear dice that actually feel properly weighted and properly balanced because I'm also one of those gamers that if the dice doesn't feel right in your hand, are you really holding dice? It's got to have that, that beefy feel so you can hear the clankety clank when it comes down. So for polyhedral dice, there's polyhero. For Star Wars or Genesis or Edge of Empire, depending on what you want to call it, Baron of Dice has a really great set. Like I said, Google Galactic RPG Dice Set, and it comes up. They actually have a two-set cheaper-than-one-set deal on their website, which is great. And uh, if you are short-stacked on getting that, there is the Dice app that Edge of Studios has for those that want to have their cell phone on the table. <clears throat> that does an actually decent job of... It does the math. It takes success and failure, neutralizes them, so it gives you the end result, not to do the actual dice elimination slash math when you do your dice roll, which is nice. And for those of you who like to game online, this is where we make the yeah. transition. Oh, go ahead, John. No, I, I, I just meant that yes, I, I want to learn more about online gaming. I admit, I'm, I'm completely new at it and I haven't tried it yet. So please go ahead. So for online gaming, the simplest dice app that's out there is if you if you've heard of this thing called Google, you can actually pull up a Google page and type in D20 or D6 and it will pop up a dice roller app in Google, which is pretty handy on the fly. I've told I will totally admit as a GM I've used that for dice rolls on the fly while I'm rolling up game stuff using pdfs that, you know on my phone and i'm like ah, i need a dice roll so that's 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 the bare minimum handy app to use if you play on virtual tabletops of course my favorite is basically roll 20 because it's the most universal of all the virtual tabletops there's some prettier ones there's some cooler ones but i like roll 20 because it's it's accessible to everybody you can have the crappiest chromebook ever and you can still play on roll 20 Whereas, you know, some of the fancier ones like Fantasy Grounds really require a powerful machine to run it without having issues. So on Roll20, they give you access to the standard 
polyhedral dice and fudge dice for those who like to play fate which is always a good you know system they also give you access to like a 52 card deck of cards so like if you're doing savage worlds you can use it for that and if you happen to be a paid member for roll 20 which is one of the few things i've seen behind a paywall with them you can actually download the edge of empires api script and run that in the background so as the gm you actually have a gm screen where you can set the difficulty of the dice rolls and your players character sheets will have the green dice for characteristics and the yellow dice for their ranks and skills so that way they can click one button and you see the entire dice roll in symbols as well as the end result which of of all of the online tabletops roll 20 is the only one that i've seen that has a really good use for the star wars dice system because it is a very interesting proprietary dice setup that they use for both genesis their generic system as well as for for edge of empire star wars star wars which is you know one of my personal favorites so if you need virtual dice there is of course the actual edge studios if you go to their website they have their actual legit app which it is a nice app because it has access to all of the star wars games as well as you can totally sneak in a polyhedral set of dice into that app as well and it seems to be fairly random ish like anybody who watches any of our streams when we play genesis like salvage or Karanoth or Android for the cyberpunk setting, you totally will hear my players complain when the dice are being wickedly evil. They'll be like, ah, oh, you need to reset the lobby because the, the script is being biased. <laughs> Even though it's funny uh -huh. when it's the players being biased against, that, that's when they're angry. When it's the NPCs, that they're okay with that. And of course, you know, I've, I've done a few videos showing players how to make the lobby in Roll20, how you can just really easily go into your API script button as a GM and click refresh. Everybody jumps back in the lobby and you keep playing and it's been reset for randomization. But then again, like I joke with folks, it's dice. Let's be honest. When it comes to randomization, dice really don't do random. Each time you roll, it's a whole new random number of the chances and all that good stuff. It's not like the right. uh, card counting where you are eliminating the randomness towards the end of the deck if you've been paying attention. Uh, I'm a fan of 21, so I understand that. Damn you, five deck shoes. Because that's when you totally lose track of counting cards. But uh, when it comes to dice, you know, and... and like you said, you will have dice that are your best friends. You will have dice as a GM. I have two D20s that I ridiculously can count on crappy rolls. And sometimes during a game when I feel like the story is going against my players, sometimes I will throw them a bone and throw the knuckle bone that I know will actually come out with a lower number on average than usual. And conveniently, it is one of those Gen Con dice that when you roll a 20, it says F something. And when you roll a natural one, it says F someone else. So, you know, it's always uh -huh. a fun one on that one. Because it totally will get the players jazzed when they see uh, the, the bad number one come up on the dice roll. But, uh, I mean, and dice are important when it comes to RPGs because dice add the randomness. Like, like one of the writers for Magpie Games, when I joke with him, we've, we've played many a game at Rincon, many of Rincons, where the joke is the, that's why we roll the dice, because we're asking the game a question and we're rolling the dice to get the answer. You know, because that way it's not the GM's preconceived answer it's not the player's preconceived character's answer it's the no shit there we were this happened and then and then you roll the dice and you get your answer you know one way or another you know and i, I am as a gm a fan of the you know what that's a good question let's roll this real quick to see what the dice say you know because that way <laughs> if it's something that i didn't prepare in advance and a player you know Lo and behold, the player does something the GM did not prepare for. When does this happen? You know, it's fun to have the dice actually do, do the decider, you know. 
Like in some games when you roll a dice to see, does the merchant have this rare item? Roll the dice and find out. You know, it never hurts to, to put a little dice action in as long as you're not dice micromanaging. Because I'm never a fan of when players will immediately grab dice and roll before saying yeah. what they're doing. Because as a GM, yeah. I'm like, dude, you don't even need to roll for that. And that's that's a phrase I you hear often in my stream games is, dude, you don't even need to roll for that. Here's the answer. You know, it's as a character in character, you the player may not know this, but you the character is is aware of this is your answer you're looking for. You know. Now if you'd like to probe further, you can always do a skill check because I am a fan of skills other than combat being used in the game because it makes things interesting, damn it. But uh definitely if you, you ever need help with dice, you know, you can always reach out to other folks that you see streaming games and it's like, hey, how did you do this cool thing? Because like when the Star Wars dice first came out, everybody was asking everybody questions because we were lucky enough that a couple gamers who know Roll20's game mechanics, and then by mechanics, I mean actual coding, that they popped Ooh. up with this and they put a quick directions on Hey guys, it's drag and drop. You just pull the you know the directory down, you drop it in there, you say load it, and boom, your game now has cool symbol dice instead of actual number dice. You know, and it's players want to help players. You know, it's like folks that make dice. You know, they want to make. I want a cool dice that does this. I mean, we all know if you guys have happened to see them, the Arby's dice that come out once every two or three years that really are ugly, as Kelly said when she finally saw a set in real life, she's like, ugh, don't ever buy me that set. And of course, you know, we all know when it comes to dice, you can get the pretty, pretty goblin rocks. You can get dice of every color combination under the rainbow. And then you yep. love them or forget them. Little orphan children dice. <laughs> I I played much too much Vampire the Masquerade in my youth. I have a lot of dice that have been orphaned and left behind. Because sometimes you don't really need that many D10s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, as we're finishing up here, I would like to, to chip in one bit of old-fashioned tradition just to keep the whole dice thing alive. <laughs> Um, for as long as I have been doing this, which is like <clears throat> far, far, far too long, uh, one of the oldest traditions that I'm aware of is when you uh, uh, when, when you uh, welcome a new role player into the community, it is uh, it, it, it's common practice in some parts of the world where everybody will open their dice bag and everybody will give the new person a single die. Oh. Right. And oh, I, I still, I, I still yeah. have, I still have those uh, the, those uh, freshly contributed dice from when when I started, and I actually keep them in their own very small uh, separate bag, just because uh, ju just because they they mean that much to me, but. Uh, I I, uh, I still do that. So when, whenever I break in a new gamer, um, yeah, I will. Um, you know, I'll ask the people at the table. Everybody pony up one, and so that you know, by the time they're uh, by the time they're done, you know, they, they they walk away with you know at least half a dozen of the you know the most important, and and it goes from there. And I've it doesn't matter if you've done this for four months or forty five years. I have definitely seen people uh yes you can have too many dice that's possible when you're carrying mm -hmm. them around in a suitcase that's that that's too many <laughs> but I've also seen people who have a wide variety of dice for very specific occasions and so it's like uh you're in a castle you're underground and you're fighting the gray ooze oh, okay hold on a minute I know it's in here I know it's where is it okay okay I'm I'm ready now okay let's do this <laughs> you, you you have a dice just for that yes I'm, yes I do yes this happens to you a lot more times than I want to say. Yes, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely agree with that. And I will also throw out there the dice etiquette. Don't touch another man's dice or woman. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, 
as as a GM, often I'll be like, boom, here's big pile of dice in the middle of the table. Feel free. These have GM cooties, which means I can usually call when they roll good for me and bad for you. But uh, mm -hmm. always, always politely ask before picking up someone's dice to hand it back to them after they slingshotted it sl crap style across the table. Is it okay if I pick up those dice? Because some people... And it's usually the older school gamers, in my opinion. The new ones are just like, you know, touch my dice. But uh, a lot of the older school, you know, players will give you the dirtiest looks if you touch their dice to hand them back. Or my favorite is the, when the dice hit the floor, there's almost always one player who will jump up and put their arms out to wait for the dice to stop to see what the answer is before anyone touches it. And yep. at least one person to verify that number before they pick it up. <laughs> oh. But that's just the old school dice etiquette that I think most of us grew up with. Play it Absolutely. where it lands. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's, <laughs> what it, that, 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 that's what it is. Yes. Of course, my, my old favorite was the whole when it lands in a book right in the binding and you get a tilt. And you have to have that moment where everyone's silent and then it's like cocked. And you have to yep. make sure the GM agrees that yes, that's a cock dice, re-roll it. Uh, yes. Cause that's that that again goes back to dice etiquette. So I would totally throw out there, just be clear at your gaming table what is and is not cricket on the on playing with other people's dice and uh tilts off the table you know general rules like that that most folks you know would be dyed in the wool keep you know wait till it stops moving on the floor or worse when the, the cat or the dog finds it and wants to push it around a couple extra times is that uh, is that kosher you know if it gets you know interrupted or do we just you know re-roll on the table what is what is the etiquette at the table so that way there's no misunderstanding Because I totally, personally, because I've GM too much, have no problem picking up somebody's dice and handing them back. But then you get the dirty look. And you know when you got that dirty look. Or is that the gasp you're hearing? The gasp. So uh, do we think that pretty much covers favorite dice? I say yes. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and call it there for RPG a day, August the 9th. And through the magic of time travel and other things, we will be back tomorrow with uh, August the 10th, which uh, I do believe that's what uh, John was talking about earlier for the August the 10th favorite tie-in fiction, which uh, with two fiction writers, I totally think it's appropriate to have you guys back for that one. Just going to say, I mean, I don't write any fiction except for my game stuff, and that's game material. How much of that do we leave on the cutting room floor? No comment. <laughs> Just cry silently on the unused manuscripts. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening, and be back tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, please check out D&D &D Journey of the 5th Edition and Ragnarok and roll a Scion Hero to Ragnarok Story. Also, check out our Patreon page for more content and behind-the-scenes things, as well as joining us for a one-shot game or two.